How much pressure is needed to compress water by 1% given bulk modulus of water is 2 gigapascals? All right, let's solve this. We'll start by collecting some data from the question. Um, we've been given the bulk modulus. We have been asked to compress water by 1%. And for that, how much pressure is required? That's the question. So based on this, we could pretty much say that we're dealing with bulk stress and bulk strain, right? So the first thing we we'll write down is the connection that we know between them, and that's Hooke's law. So let's write down Hooke's law. Hooke's law says that bulk stress is proportional to bulk strain. So bulk stress, which is just the pressure, is proportional to bulk strain. And bulk strain is defined as the change in volume per unit volume. So this is bulk strain. And the proportionality constant itself is the bulk modulus. Bulk modulus. And we have spoken a lot about this in the previous video. So if you need a little bit of refresher on this, or maybe you need to revise this, then it's better to go back, watch that video first, and then come back over here. Anyways, whenever we're dealing with problems on elasticity with very tiny percentage changes, here's a way which I like to think about this. The first thing we'll do is get to understand this equation a little bit better, get to understand the bulk modulus a little bit more intuitively. So for that, we could say that bulk modulus will be equal to pressure, will be equal to pressure when this number becomes one. When delta V over V becomes one. But what does it mean for delta V over V to become one? What does that tell us? Well, delta V is the change in volume. And of course, we're dealing with compression. That means the changes in volume are going to be negative. Our volume will decrease. So there must be a negative sign over here, but let's not worry about that too much, all right? So delta V is the change in the volume and V is the initial volume. So when delta V over V equals one, we're saying the change in the volume should equal the volume. Meaning, if the initial volume was five, we compress it by five. If the initial volume was 10, we compress it by 10. So we are compressing it to nothing. In other words, we're talking about 100% compression. So this means 100% compression. And at first you might be like, whoa, can we do that? Can we compress something to nothing? And the answer is no, you can't do it, but that's a nice way to think about it while solving problems. So we could say that bulk modulus tells us how much pressure is needed to compress something by 100%. Which means for water, we require two gigapascals to compress it by 100%. So now, now that we know that, how much pressure is needed to compress by 1%? Oh, we could just solve this doing a cross multiplication, right? That's why I like to think of it this way. So let's go ahead and write that. For water, we now know that two gigapascals, two gigapascals is needed for 100% compression. Gives us 100% compression. And, and don't take this literally, okay? It doesn't literally mean that you can put two gigapascals and you compress water to nothing. Remember, Hooke's law only works within elastic regions, so this will only work for very tiny values, actually. But anyways, this is a nice way to, nice way to solve the problem, right? So two, gigapas two, <laughs> two gigapascals gives us 100% compression. So to get 1% compression, how much pressure is needed? Well, we can just cross multiply and get the answer. The pressure needed would be two gigapascals times one divided by 100. And that pressure would be, well, let's see, giga is 10 to the power nine. Okay, let's just go ahead and write that. We could say it's two times 10 to the power nine. And we cut two zeros. So you end up with two times 10 to the power seven pascals. And that's our answer. That is the amount of pressure needed to compress water. And now just to give you a little feeling for how big this pressure is, we can write this a little differently. I'll go ahead and write this as, we write that over here. Let me put one mark over here, okay. We'll write this as P equals 10 to the power seven can be written as 10 to the power two times 10 to the power five, right? We can do that. So 10 to the power seven can be written as 10 to the power two times 10 to the power five. And this is 100, and 100 times two would be 200. And you might be wondering why I'm writing like this. You'll see. So this is 200 
times 10 to the power of 5 pascals. And guess what? 10 to the power of 5 pascals is the amount of pressure that we are experiencing right now due to the atmosphere. So um, you may be sitting in your chair or maybe you're lying on your bed and watching this. Then there's air that's pushing on you and right now you're pretty much experiencing, so the total pressure that you're experiencing due to air is roughly 10 to the power 5 pascals. Which means the amount of pressure needed to compress water just by 1% is 200 times that number. That is an incredible amount of pressure needed. Just goes to show you how non-compressible water is. And now you'll agree with me that most of the times we like to think of water as a non-compressible material. And the reason is it's not literally non-compressible, you can compress it, but even for a very tiny percentage change, the required pressure is so humongous that we can pretty much assume water to be non-compressible.